Hey guys, Ryan here, and in this video, I'm going to cover how to set up an installation of Pop OS for gaming in 2022. So, step one is to install the correct GPU driver for your hardware. Now, Pop OS isn't unique that in the fact that it offers two ISO files for installation. You have one that includes the proprietary NVIDIA driver for people with NVIDIA GPUs, as well as one for people that have Intel or AMD GPUs. In addition, as part of the overall installation process of Pop OS, it will also install the correct driver for you. This removes a post-installation step. Now, System76, the makers of Pop OS, also keep their ISOs up to date, meaning it's very likely that when you install Pop OS for the first time, you'll be using the latest driver that's available to you. Now, this differs from distributions such as Ubuntu or Linux Mint, where driver installation is typically something that you need to do post-installation. Plus, if you keep your system up to date, you will always be running the latest driver available. On a related note, Pop OS now updates the kernel in between releases, so for people with newer AMD hardware, you no longer have to manually update the kernel to support your hardware. In short, choose the appropriate ISO for your system, install Pop OS, update your system, and then you're all set. So step two is to install Steam and enable Proton support for your entire Steam library. So if you're going to be playing Windows developed games on Linux, especially ones that are in your Steam library, then you're going to be using a tool called Proton. Now Proton isn't perfect. In fact, certain games are unlikely to ever work on Linux, in particular games that use some form of kernel level anti-cheat such as EAC or BattleEye. But that might change, as both these anti-cheats are now officially supported by Proton, but it is up to the developer themselves to enable support, and so far only a handful have actually done that. Now another area where Proton is not well supported is DirectX 12 titles, where a certain aspect of DirectX 12 may not be supported by the equivalent Vulkan extension. That being said with these exceptions, you'll find that performance should be comparable to Windows, assuming you have a modern GPU with more than 4GB of VRAM. I also recommend that you visit ProtonDB, just so you can get an idea about the compatibility of your particular Steam library. Now Steam can be installed from the Pop Shop, but you want to make sure that you choose the Pop OS version and not the Flatpak. The latter is for more advanced users that want the sandbox version of Steam, but also understand the shortcomings of that particular method. Either way, once you've installed Steam, you want to launch it, update it, and then sign in with your particular account. Uh, next, we need to enable Proton globally so that we can play some Windows developed games on Linux. We want to go to the top where it says Steam, go to Settings, and then underneath the tab right down the bottom where it says Steam Play, make sure to enable both Enable Steam Play for supported titles, as well as Enable Steam Play for all other titles. Now you'll find it will give you the option to select either Proton Experimental or Proton Stable Builds. In about 99% of cases, I would stick with Proton Experimental, which means it will just include fixes for games that might not have been fully tested yet. Plus you can always manually select a stable build on a game by game basis later on if you find a game doesn't launch. Either way, once you've done that, click the OK button and then restart Steam to apply the settings. From this point onwards, the process of installing games is identical to Windows. You select one on the left hand side, click the install button and then follow the process until the game's installed. At that point just launch the game as normal. So step 3 is to use Lutris to play games outside of Steam. So my go-to option for playing games that I've got outside of the Steam ecosystem is to use Lutris. And Lutris is a game launcher that has built-in support for GOG, Epic Game Stores, Origin, Ubisoft Connect, as well as a wide range of emulators including RetroArch. In other words, this will cover about 99% of options available outside of Steam. Much like Steam, you can install Lutris directly from the Pop Shop, and once you've installed it, launch the application. The use of Lutris is simple, either click on the store that you have on the left hand side, sign into your account, and you'll find your games will now appear on the right hand side. From here, just click install to install the game. Alternatively, if you have games that are not natively supported by Lutris, then you can click the plus symbol at the top left, and it will give you five particular options. In most cases, you will be choosing the option here, which is search the Lutris website for installers. Once the installation is finished, select the game, and then click the play button to launch the game. Now, if you want to be more granular with your installation, you can right click on the selection, go to configure, and then under the runner and system options, you'll find a wide variety of toggles to tweak the game to your particular liking. 
So with that, you've now set up Pop! OS for gaming. Thank you very much for watching guys, and if you did find this video helpful, then please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye now.